So when you see either uh, an equation, something like this, like 2 is less than x, less than 10, this would be a, a, a compound inequality. This is also a compound inequality. In fact, the 2 less than x means, uh, and less than 10 means 2 has to be less than x, and x has to be less than 10. So these are all examples of compound inequalities. For this one, either this has to be true or that has to be true. Okay, this, so this is more of a, uh, an or statement. So no matter what you get, as long as you get x or a real number solving the first one or the second one, those would be uh, included in your solutions. Over here, you better make sure that no matter what value you get, well, you got x values, they have to be both, you have to solve both of these, both greater than 2 and less than 10. So anyway, that's just a little background behind what we're looking at here, and we've got uh, the first one, we'll solve the first one uh, by dividing both sides by 3. When we do that, we keep the direction of the inequality the same because we divided by a positive number. And uh, the 3's cancel there, the 3's cancel there, so we have x is greater than or equal to 1, or let's go ahead and divide both sides by 9 on the right-hand side, and uh, the 9's cancel here, and 54 divided by 9 is 6. So we get on the left, uh, sorry, on the right-hand side, we get x is less than 6. So let's think about this for a second. Is there a number, it's easier, it's better to graph it, actually, uh, on this one because we have uh, 0, we have 1, and we have 6. So as long as a real number is greater than or equal to 1, that's a, that's a, good, that's a good number. That would solve the left side. So I'm going to go all these numbers here. All these numbers are greater than or equal to 1. No matter, it doesn't matter about that 6 there. This is where students get confused. They think, oh, I've got a 6 there. So I'm going to just shade everything in between this 1 and the 6. Well, you're missing out on an infinite number of solutions to the first one because every number that's, that's greater than 6 is also certainly greater than or equal to 1. So we shade all of those. Well, then what about the other ones? Well, we've got x is less than 6. Well, any number to the left of 6 is certainly less than 6. So we shade every number to the left of 6. Even though we have this open circle there, it's already been covered. 6 is a solution to this compound inequality because it's greater than or equal to 1. So it gets included. You don't need to worry about that open circle there. I, I drew, drew it just because uh, I'm used to drawing that when I see that. But nevertheless, when we express our answer in terms of of uh, graphing our answer, that's it. Uh, our interval notation, though, on the other hand, would be all real numbers, well, all real numbers. And the way we write all real numbers is the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this is your inequality solution, this is your graphic solution, and you're shading the whole number line. You've got to understand that this open circle there really means nothing. Uh, it was just there because it's a habit. And then the interval notation would be the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. There you go.